Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. This is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to chaikinanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email. Follow along with this show. Get daily stock ideas to consider. It hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. U.S. equities lower in Monday's trading, though off the worst levels of the session. It was a November to remember. Treasuries were unchanged to a bit stronger at the front end of the curve. The dollar was better on the yen and euro crosses. Gold was down 40 basis points, remains under pressure. WTI crude uh, settled down 40 basis points as well. Though also off the worst levels of the day as the market looks ahead to today's OPEC meeting. It was a strong month, which saw the major averages all gain double digit percentages. Investors sold some of the biggest winners in the tail end of the month yesterday. Lock in some gains as we head into December, and I can't argue with that. As we get to the desk this morning, S&P 500 futures are up 40 basis points after Asian equities were higher overnight. China, South Korea, and Japan, all markets I've talked about, uh, all trading higher over the past, uh, over, all trading up over 1%. European equities also seeing solid gains. I've talked about that in my notes as well. You really should be taking a trial at Shaken Analytics and reading my note on a daily basis. Treasuries are weaker with the curve kind of flattening a little bit. Dollar is lagging on the euro, but it's better against the yen. Gold is up a percent and a half. Crude oil is down 20 basis points to kick us off on the first day of the final month of what has been, I guess, a year to remember. Uh, let's take a look at the major averages now. SPY still holding above that breakout level. And our view remains the same. Our view remains the market is positioned to work higher into the end of the year. I think the case can be made that as long as the SPY is above 340, it has upside potential to $413. That's based off of Fibonacci extensions. 340 is obviously important support below that 320. For the Qs, 260 key support, as long as we're above 280, we're playing for the September highs and we're almost there. And in two different notes today, I asked the question, what happens if the Qs break out? What happens if the home to the biggest market cap stocks, the biggest leaders up until September, actually gets in gear with those cyclical names and those value names? What if the rotation is out of low yielding treasuries and zero yielding gold and into the equity market? What if that's the case? You don't hear a lot of talk about that, but what if it's the case? Look at treasuries under pressure. Look at gold under pressure. Everyone thinks it's tech that's being sold, but it's not. It's only the mega cap names. So some squaring up of books and some squaring up of positions into the end of the year. What happens if the queues get in gear? What if we get a breakout through those September highs? You have IWM broken out. You have the SPY broken out. That would be the third leg of the school stool. And I think that that would make a pretty compelling case for further upside. Obviously, relative strength will become important or not become, will remain important. But what if the relative strength is at the asset class level? It's interesting. I think it's something to be thinking about. Nobody pays attention. Everybody just wants to put together a hodgepodge of stocks in their portfolios, and not a lot of people pay attention to the cross-asset themes. But what if? What if the rotation... What if the bigger rotation is at the asset class level? That could be big. I think it could have massive implications, especially because my view is that we are at the closer to the beginning of a cyclical bull than the end. Let's take a look at our market in a minute now. What are we writing about in the note today? Well, some profit taking into the final day of a record month. I mean, you can't argue with that. I mean, monster month, especially for value themes, and small cap themes, but I mean, the Dow having its best month since 1987. You, know, you got to take some off the table. You have to, you know, you have to put, you know, you have to ring the register every now and then. Technology, in my opinion, is nearing a key relative level. Small cap tech is a clear leader. This is what I'm talking about. I think, you know, lazy analysts are running around saying, oh, it's a rotation out of tech. No, it's not. 
Last week, we showed you equal weight tech. This week, we're going to show you small cap tech. Don't fall for the lazy TV narrative. Industrials continue to outperform. Defensive sectors remain relative losers. And futures point to a higher open today. Taking a look now at the major indices from a power bar perspective, the Dow, Dow down 77 basis points, four to three bulls to bears. S&P down 37 basis points. Uh, we got 123 to 51 bulls to bears there. I think we want to take a look at the NASDAQ because what if what I'm talking about started to play out? What if it breaks out? NASDAQ was up yesterday, bucked the trend. Actually started bucking the trend a little bit towards the tail end of last week. Um, kind of interesting to me. Power bar improving 19 to 9 on the bull bear ratio now. Small caps, all right, so some profit taking in the small caps. Uh, but still a solid ratio, 814 to 172 bulls to bears there. Uh, bonds down ticks, sending yields lower. According to the Chaken Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are strongly bullish. Major indexes across the board are mixed. Let's take a look at our stocks of the day. Stocks, right? I got a ton of good feedback. So thank you to the folks who have chimed in with uh, some feedback uh, here in the near term because um, what I've seen is that people like these screens. So I'm going to continue to do them twice a week. And just given my view for a broadening out of participation and potential for upside into the end of the year, uh, I ran what I call our, our classic bull screen. Our classic bull screen is just very bullish and bullish stocks above their rising trend line, six month highs in money flow and relative strength persistency. And you know we want to keep it to stocks that are above $10. So we get some interesting names there, Arc Best, Beezer, right? Cadence, Avid, Generac, right? Take two. Um, you know, take a look at these names. 33 names. Freeport, Mac Moran is a name we've talked about a lot. Carriage Services. Uh, Sleep Number is a name that we've talked about. So um, take a look at these names. Add them to a watch list. Intuit, another one that I've liked a lot. Tupperware has been a big winner. Um, 33 names here for you to do some work on, add to a watch list, look for compelling opportunities if they present themselves into the end of the year. I'm going to continue to do the screens. Thank you all who have chimed in with some good feedback. Let's take a look at our sector tracker now, moving to the last five days. Tech, comms, discretionary top of the list. Healthcare, materials, fins, staples, middle of the road, a little profit taking in the industrials. Uh, energy got hit hard yesterday. Uh, some money coming out of that group. Um, we do have an OPEC meeting today. Uh, utilities, REITs, the bottom of the list. We'd like to see the defensive groups there. We'll take a look at what that looks like a little bit later on in the show. But you know, position squaring uh, continues to be part of the game here. But remember what I've been saying. Broadening out calls for being more open, right? taking a broader view of where you're looking for opportunities. Uh, and that's largely paid off, I think, for investors who have done it the right way. Our industry in focus, cap market services, speaking of fins, over the past six months, been an outperformer by about 6.46%. Power bar ratio looks at future potential is very strong. 23 to 5 bulls to bears, number 9 of 21 subsectors. We want to look at names like Raymond James, Financial, Cowan, and Evercore, all with very bullish ratings. Um, that are holdings in a fund that is bullish, outperforming, and trading near a 52-week high. I mean, if you're looking for ideas, right? And if you've been following along, financials was kind of the next group we started saying good things about, right? So the rotation was there. And if you've been following along, hopefully you've skirted yourself to some of these ideas. Um, fascinating. I've, I've called out names like Morgan Stanley. Uh, in my notes for clients. Let's take a look at yesterday's movers and shakers, our gainers and losers. Uh, ISS, I, uh, info, INFO, Market Insight, uh, S&P Global deal up 7.5%. AMD presented at the Credit Suisse Tech Conference, that stock higher by 6.3%. Xilinx, Corvo, uh, both traded 52-week highs. The semis are on absolute fire. Look at a monthly chart of the semiconductors. If you follow me on Twitter, I threw it up there last night. 
absolute fire. Skyworks, SWKS, nothing company specific to drive trading in that one. But remember what I say. If semis are outperforming, that's good. If they're actually accelerating, right? If the outperformance is actually accelerating, uh, I think that that's even better, right? Rate of change matters. Again, I think a lot of people throw up that semi-relative chart, and I've seen a lot of people kind of pirate that work. Um, but I think the acceleration, deceleration factors are important as well there. Uh, on the loser side of the board, not a ton company specific, you know, some profit taking in the energy patch after a monster run off the lows. That's to be expected. Uh, EOG, PXD, FANG, and, you know, Conic COP, you know, all down substantially. Carnival Cruise, not, you know, didn't see anything company specific to drive trading in these names. I think it's just month end flows, right? Some some position squaring into the end of the month, some profit taking and some of the bigger winners. I mean, energy had a monster month. There's no two ways about it. You got to book some, right? Feed the ducks when they're quacking. Let's get into the, let's get into the relatives now. So here's tech, here's, here's large cap tech, XLK relative to SPY and, you know, clear underperformer since the start of September, right? Below the 50 day, below the 200 day. We, we show this chart all the time. You've seen it. Uh, it's fascinating to me, however, that the RSI never through this consolidation, never made it to oversold levels, never made it below 30. As a matter of fact, it hasn't been below 30 in any point in the past 12 months on an absolute basis, right? Similar to the Q's knocking on the door of new highs. So we're kind of at this inflection point between the 50 and the 200 day. And what happens if it breaks out? What happens if the cues go? What happens if tech goes? Just broader participation. I'm not saying, you know, it, it could happen and maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Well, these are the questions. These are the roadmaps. If those cues go back to the beginning of the presentation, if the cues break out and you have all of your major averages at all time highs, you have breakouts around the world. Take a look at it. Drill down on country funds. Go look at the country ETFs and look at the ones that are breaking to all-time highs, right? For those who are concerned about tech, just go look through Asia, right? Look through Korea, which is heavily weighted to tech, South Korea. Look at Taiwan, heavily weighted to tech. These things are trading at 52-week highs, right? So, so it, it doesn't appear to me that there is a tech wreck coming that's going to hurt the overall market. It just looks like some position squaring. Fascinating as it plays out. Because check out this one. Look at small cap tech, PSCT, S&P small cap infotech ETF. It traded at a 52-week high yesterday. It's overbought. It has bullish momentum above 50-day moving average, above 200-day moving average. Look at the 50-day accelerating to the upside. Look on a relative basis, small cap tech against the S&P 500 trading up near 52-week high. If there was a tech wreck coming, not only would I expect to see Korea and Taiwan trading lower, I'd expect to see the more speculative names in the sector trading lower. Small cap. It's not happening. In fact, it looks to be accelerating to the upside. Drill down. Do that extra work. You'll be rewarded for it. Defensive sectors on a relative basis all in downtrends from top to bottom. Utilities, real estate, and staples. So we have tech potentially healing. We have rotation into cyclical value. And we have the defensive groups all underperforming. It's a pretty bullish setup for equities, if you ask me. Hope everybody has a great Tuesday. Take us for a test drive. Get my note. I talk about this stuff in much more detail in my note every day. Chakenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. I'm back tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.